All right, welcome back. Next, we're going to discuss another important moment in the history of Bitcoin, something called Bitcoin Cash. So we talked about the idea of Segwit2x. The motivation behind it was to lower transaction fees by increasing the block size, make it so that you could have twice the number of transactions in a given block compared to Bitcoin. But that didn't that, that fell apart. Roughly at the same time as that all the drama was happening with Segwit and its attempts at increasing the, the size of blocks, there was a group of people working on basically an alternate version of Bitcoin. Rather than taking the approach of grad, of upgrading miners and, and bringing everyone up to speed in what's called a soft fork, making it backwards compatible, the idea behind Bitcoin Cash was to just split off from the Bitcoin network and make a, a, an entirely separate cryptocurrency, basically the same except for a couple pieces. So Bitcoin Cash would have eight megabyte blocks and that would 8x increase the actual capacity of a block. And that would, by a factor of eight, increase the capacity of the network in terms of how many transactions per second it can handle. And that would also have the added effect of lowering transaction fees, just because there would be greater supply for the same given demand. And it's important to note that this wasn't just this. The people who were developing Bitcoin Cash thought that this could entirely replace Bitcoin. As they were scheming it, they weren't certain whether or not it would be fully adopted by the whole network or maybe 99% of it or whether it would be a 30-70 split. And the other interesting thing, because this is a hard fork, Bitcoin Cash was a hard fork, which means again, that it just split off from the Bitcoin. You can actually see the moment it was block 478,558 was the last block before Bitcoin Cash. And at that moment, it split. So then there was one side, which was Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin, and then the other half, or it's not quite, it's not fair to call it a half, but this other chain, which is Bitcoin Cash, which we're not, again, we're not actually showing here that the block should be eight times larger, but that would be hard to display. So we don't have that here, but this is an entirely separate cryptocurrency. And, and now they, they both still exist. They have totally different trajectories and we'll show you a chart in just a little bit. Uh, but an interesting note, if you had a transaction, let's say that you had, I don't know, a year before this happened or even the day before it happened, I had a transaction, somebody sent me 10 Bitcoin. After the split, I have 10 Bitcoin still, but then the Bitcoin Cash blockchain still says that I have 10 Bitcoin Cash. So everybody who had Bitcoin prior to the split still had Bitcoin, but they also got the same amount of Bitcoin Cash. So if you went and spent that 10 Bitcoin in the normal Bitcoin chain, you wouldn't have actually impacted the state of the Bitcoin Cash chain. So what we have here is a chart that is comparing the price of Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash is in red here. You can see that Bitcoin existed for a lot longer, but around, I think it's August of 2017. Yeah, August of 2017, Bitcoin Cash split off. That was the hard fork. You can see that it's always been worth less than Bitcoin, but it's also kind of followed a similar trajectory. But again, they are not at all related to one another at this point. It just happens that uh, you know, most of the crypto market at this point kind of ha followed this general trend. But if somebody buys Bitcoin, it, there's nothing that is added to the Bitcoin Cash ledger to reflect that. If someone buys Bitcoin Cash, nothing is added to the Bitcoin blockchain. They're completely separate entities. And now we're in the realm of politics because any website, any exchange that supports Bitcoin Cash has been removed from the bitcoin.org list of exchanges. So this is important to, to understand that there is no central authority that decides the course of Bitcoin. It really is just social consensus. And a lot of these ideas and problems are hashed out on Reddit and in message boards and in conversations between the people who have a lot of hash power. So in order to quantify the acceptance, the, the fork, how many people accepted Bitcoin Cash? What we can look at is something well, how many called, miners? Yeah, how many miners? Uh, we can look at the actual hash rate. And the hash rate is the m amount of effort, the amount of energy put forth towards mining these blocks. So I'm going to click down here to switch over. So this chart is of hash rate. And hash rate is determined based on the expected rate at, at which miners should be guessing proof of work versus the actual rate. So we can use this chart as a rough estimate of how many miners are mining Bitcoin Cash as opposed to Bitcoin. And it's important to note that the actual mining hardware is different between the two because Bitcoin Cash uses an eight megabyte block and you need new hardware, not the existing ASICs to mine these. So 
what we have here is the if we if we look at the proportion of the blue to the red that is approximately the proportion of the network that is still mining bitcoin versus mining bitcoin cash so it's much smaller but it's significant. And one other interesting comparison to look at, uh, the whole point of Bitcoin Cash, one of the main motivations was to increase the block size. So there are eight times the number of transactions that can fit in a single block. And if we look at block size, you'll actually see that for most of the time Bitcoin Cash is in the red, it's it's been less than the size of the blocks in Bitcoin, meaning that the full potential of it hasn't been realized. There, the network hasn't been uh, trafficked enough, it hasn't been busy enough for there to be, to fill up eight times the number of transactions. But there have been a couple spikes, and I think this one, is this probably when Coinbase listed yeah, Bitcoin Cash? almost certainly, yeah. I can't quite get the mouse to go over there. It looks like the block size got up to about five megabytes, but still not at the complete eight. Right. And if you look at the upper bound of the blue chart, that caps out at one megabyte. So the blocks are never going to exceed one megabyte because SegWit2x, what we discussed in the last video, was never executed. 